very it's not good if if that money is not there anymore what will be the the, the problem so and another thing uh, which people do is uh my father is a senator i want to i want her to marry a senator like me too it's very <laughs> so if you are going to if you want to marry marry with your faith and pray and god is still answer prayer amen, amen. so okay. so, so sorry, let me go with you <laughs> in as much as i won't uh, disagree with what he said i don't want to subscribe to it because the essence is not it's like we don't want to talk about the ordeal of anybody here but we want to look at the godly principle that enhances marriage i start from the beginning that if someone cannot cultivate you take care of you add value to your life don't go there don't fall in love Amen. with that person Amen. that's why i don't want to read through the statistics the current statistics of marriages in in america now one out of three marriages in the first three years the end of a divorce that is the current statistics Sorry, bro. That is the current statistics. In three marriages that come to the altar in three years, no one is married again. Because of the issue we're talking about. So it's not that if someone we wanted to marry, yeah, you are spare, but like I said before, look at where the man is. Who is this man spiritually? If you are a Christian. And don't make a mistake of saying, I can marry anybody, I can ch I will change the person. Yeah. Bible says, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Yeah. Yes. Run away from them. You can't change nobody. Yes. Look at your family member who are yet still struggling in Christianity. You haven't changed them. Now you are thinking, if I get married to him, I will change him. No. Or if I marry her, I will change her. No. no. All right, sir. Thank you. The question answer good? Yes. Any comment? No comment? Right. Next question. How do you deal with loneliness in an in and out of a relationship for single and married? Loneliness. Get to get Anybody want to answer? Loneliness as a single person and in marriage? <laughs> How can you be married and you are lonely? Yeah, that's what you said. Yeah, it's, it's, I have a friend. She has been married. I have a friend. She has been married for, let's say, six years. And she confided in me. Yeah, the marriage started all, all good and spicy and everything. Three years now, they've not had intercourse. <laughs> this, that's loneliness. <laughs> and the guy is not budging. She has introduced, you know what, let's go to counseling, let's do this, let's go back to our pastor, and it's like, nope. I, I'm working every year, we have a new year resolution. I'm working on myself. How do you do with that? There's loneliness in, in marriage. It's not possible. Can I say something? <laughs> That's your friend, right? Can you bring him or she out of church? So pass the way. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I just really want to add something that we have to be very real. It's true. You see a lot of people going out together, either they're dating, walking down the street together, or even seeing each other occasionally or often, and some people are in marriage and being lonely because they're not interested. The word, you know, the word love is no longer in their dictionary. And many a times people are living in denial. They don't want to cry out because they feel very embarrassed that what would people say? What would they think about me? But like um, Sister Nikki was saying that 
The wife said, let's even go to counseling. Of course, because of their ego, they will not do it. There is, there is something that has actually gone wrong in that marriage. You have to be able to go back to your drawing board. And the drawing board for that woman is the word of God. A praying family stays together. Amen. Something went wrong after that three years of marriage. <clears throat> getting married is one step. Immediately as you get married, it's another step because you are progressing. Now you are in a real-time relationship and you need to respect one another. I heard something by Joel Austin the only way you will see or know marriage is going to work is by loving each other and respecting each other. Don't trash your partner. Do not trash or disrespect your partner. He hurts. He bleeds in their heart. So for that couple that is lonely in a marriage, go back to the Word of God. Let the Word of God saturate your heart. Fill yourself up with the Word of God. How many of us saw prayer room? War room. War, room. War room. You see, that was a good movie. Yes, but a lot of people will not do what that woman did. Praying constantly, effectively, and efficiently. There is nothing that can ever go wrong or bad that God cannot fix. So you have to realize, go back to the drawing board, which is God. And let God amend everything that has been destroyed and broken. And God will. Yes. Invite the person to church. Yeah. <laughs> Please, the, the essence of this talk is for those of us who are still in courtship or in dating. Get it right now. <clears throat> Before you tidy it on. Get it right now. Take your time. Before you tidy it on. Get it right now. Listen. <clears throat> it's not all that glitters are gold. Yes, you come into church, you see people, oh, clingy, clingy. It's not all that rosy. The social, the family, the work front, everything will play a role once you get married. The finances is going to be dear. The man loves you because of maybe, thank God, you are a good figure. And by the time you started having children, it's going to be taking tolls on you. And you begin to hear from the man. You know, you know, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Because what that person sees in you, what he fell in love with you, is no more dead. This is what I'm talking about, falling in love. For love cannot sustain a marriage. Yes, it's knowledge. What does he want? Excuse me, because I, I, as a grown-up person, I take my time to talk to my wife what I love her doing, what I want to see in her. There are many of us that after we get married, once you're going out, you dress up or when you're at home, you don't care. Hello? Yes, sir. You don't care what a man sees in you, you don't care. But now you're not dressed to go and look good outside. And to the man inside, you have your ring, so you don't care. There are certain little things that we have to be careful about. And the man is complaining every day, you're taking him for granted, he can't divorce you, he, you are woke already. <laughs> And the man is burning in his heart. This is not who I married. This was not what I fell in love with. And we live our hair, we live, we wear anything, go to the... And the man is wondering, where is God? <laughs> can we be real? Can, can we be real? So please, I beg you, don't take that grace for granted. I appreciate that man. Amen. Know what he wants and do it. Amen. And for us, mine too. Amen. 
I appreciate the women too. Amen. 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 Spicy. Yes, sir. Let's appreciate the women too. Yes, Not only when we want to then we say I love you. Huh? Thank you, sir, Pastor. Any comments? 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 And that question. Well, you know, I was saying, you guys were saying, but bring him to church. But if he doesn't want to come to church, you know, what, what do we do there? That's true. You can't force it. Right. You have to basically go back to drawing board and see where the um, breakdown is. You pray. You pray. That's the key word. You have to be able to pray. <laughs> you have to be able to understand that there is a problem. You have to detect where the problem is. And then you have to be able to work towards fixing the problem. So do we pray for him or we pray for ourselves? Both. But most especially, you have to pray for yourself. What is going on within you? What are you doing that you're not supposed to be doing? Or what you're not doing that you're supposed to be doing? So things like that you have to... Uh, All right. There should be no any secret. Secret in relationship? In relationship. Maybe, maybe it's uh, the guy seeing the secret open. He hear about the secret, so it may... So everything has to be open. Uh, uh, Pastor, my friend, Mrs. Long, before we start here, you said, if you're going to marry, make sure you know the individual before you say yes or no. Okay. Okay, these people, and you also mentioned that if you're going to find your partner, it's better for you to find God's house, not in the club. I believe these people are talking about, these are church people. Mm -hmm. You want to believe, you want to assume that. Okay. They're talking about church people, right? Yeah, yeah. those ones I'm talking about. These are church Christians. people. In this situation, what FGG, how can you marry six years, three years is powerful? No sexual and activities. you guys are still together. I didn't together because of money. You have kids, property. Maybe that's why they don't want to divorce or they try to respect. Because they do that here. Yeah. People live together, they divorce. It, that, that, we, I, I told you a little bit about it before. Divorce is out of the picture. <clears throat> the question we have to ask ourselves is. At what point did it get wrong? Huh? We can sit down here and I started thinking and speaking for somebody else. Listen, I can't, I can't be excited with you. Bring it into the eyes. Spend the 30,000, 40,000, 100,000 dollars to bring it to the eyes. And we get home and everything just... No, something, something definitely has gone wrong somewhere. Something has to really went wrong. It's not a blame to the individuals. There are a lot of things that we have to consider when it comes to this issue. And for many of us who come from Africa background, we have seen what, what we have integrated into our growing up has done to marriages. Yes, sir. Yes. Coming from our family members, our mothers, our fathers. Mm -hmm. right. And we are bringing it ignorantly right. to our own life. Right. This is what my father used to do. Mm -hmm. Unconsciously, you want to act like that. Mm -hmm. But I say it, listen, there's a change. When we were growing up, it was the men that provide food for the whole family. Yes. All the women don't want to stay at home, make the food. Serve the dinner. They call our father's daddy. Food is ready. And we all eat. They don't work. But civilization came into picture. Mm -hmm. Women have been liberated. From being behind, you have gone to school. Many of you now are educated. You have your bachelor's, master's, PhD. You are working. So now, your husband is bringing something into the table, and you are bringing it something into the table. And the man is still stuck in this old idea that I bring food, you make food. <laughs> and the question is, you're not looking at the equation. 
that you are not the only one bringing food. I, I, I said it few, few, I think a few weeks ago. A brother and a sister went out. They both traveled. They traveled on a daily journey. Both tired, exhausted. And they got back home. As soon as they were coming inside, the man was like, where's my food? And the lady was like, are you serious? Are you serious? We've been out together the whole day. The whole day. No one has taken anything. Now we come into that, you ask me, where is food? Let's, let's, let's understand. I, I want to believe that we're not just housewives, some of us that are married and are women that are here, that you are contributing something into the house. Yes. Your husband must compliment you and commend you. All the time. Yes, sir. If my wife is in the house and she's tired, something I go in there and make my breakfast. Yes. And I come back to bed, she asks me what I've eaten. Maybe I take care of myself. I'm taking care of myself. I don't have to come and disturb her. Only on Saturday she has off in a day. I have to wake her up on Saturday want to come and make me breakfast. What's wrong with us? The time has changed. That's what I say. Love cannot sustain marriage, but it is knowledge. If my mother is hearing me now saying, oh, I make food, she says, ah, ah. You are not making food for yourself, but she, she can't live my life. No. She had already lived her own life in her own time. Mm -hmm. This is our time. Most of the time, I do not feel turned on with my husband once or make love to me. <laughs> what? Please don't laugh. What should I do? Yeah. What should I do? I don't feel turned on with my husband. With your husband. Okay. Let's move on. Anybody want to? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody on the floor wants to answer? Give this to question. our mommy that just come in. Give it to The question is, yeah, many a times, they said that they do yes, not feel. You don't feel inspired anymore with your husband. When he wants to make love. What should we do? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Amen. It's a good thing to be here. Yes, man. And to answer this question with the knowledge I have. Yes, see. It's something in America. Yes, yes. Plus. Amen. Yes, amen. Yes. Don't feel turned up for yeah. sexual periods. Mm -hmm. It's not only the man that has to make you feel turn up. What are you doing to help the man feel, you know, interested in you? Preach it! Uh, my husband, I'm sure, to the glory of God, Pastor Jojo saw him yesterday. Yes. Yes. People see him and say, oh, daddy, you still look young. Yes. Oh, mommy, you still look young. Yes. Both of you still have to look the way that you will look appealing to each other. Amen. Not just, oh, now we are married, he has to turn me on. What do you do to turn him on? <laughs> you have to do something, in other words, maintain yourself. Amen. He loved something when he saw you the yes. first time. Yes. The same way you were then does not mean now I'm married, I have babies. Things have to fall apart. No, things have to stay together Amen. for the same love to continue. Amen. If he is so tired, if my husband was here, he would take it the other way. I'm taking it now. If I'm so tired. If he's so tired, you as the lady, you as the woman, have to find a way every time to turn him on. If, my, if he's very tired, you have to understand him. Where have you been today? How was your job today? What is not making him feel torn on now that he is in the house? Same thing goes for the women. My husband will always use it that women are very sensitive. 
Women have been somewhere that they feel so torn down. Somebody lost somebody or lost a dog. And they are weeping for that dog. And you just say, honey, okay, we are home now. Let's go in. Yeah. She don't feel torn on by that yeah. because she is still grieving for that dog that died. Same thing, if the man is not making you feel torn on, find out why. Is it at his job? What went on today? Daddy already said our parents used to give them food. A day like that is the day you prepare the best food. Mm. <laughs> Don't look up to what he's going to do, how to turn you on. Prepare his best food. Get your best attire on. Get the room nice and okay. Lighting up. Light the whole thing up. Mm. If they're young children, put them to bed. Amen. He doesn't have to be the one turning you on all the time. Make a thing to for him to say, oh, I see where this lady is going. Men do not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't wait for the men to turn you on all the time. Get your situation ready. Just reading you looking good and best food. All that moody attitude from wherever you came from, the job, co worker. We'll be automatic. Oh my God, what am I doing to my wife? Mm -hmm. Thank you, my darling. Mm -hmm. He may not say it, especially our African men may not say, Thank you, my darling. <laughs> that word, we don't get it, but what they will do is more than, Thank you, my darling. Thank you. Thank you. Any comment? Let me make me say one thing. Uh, thank you, Mommy, for, for that. I, I said it before. When we newly got married, we, we dressed to impress. And once we got married, we let it go. There are ways that you can still get the attention of your partner. And, uh, you know, man or woman. You're dressing alone. You're dressing alone. Can let him leave the TV and come to the room. But once we are so comfortable that we take everything for granted, the man is complaining within him. He has spoken about it. He has pointed. He has gone out of his way to buy you something to wear. But you are sticking to your old fashion. So the man at this point, okay. And you are complaining, you are not on it on. Look at yourself. Look at yourself in one day. And you can do you can do the little I, I just read you. Thank you, sir, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, the next question again. Same thing the salary. I perceive my partner is cheating because things are drastically in our relationship. How can I find out this truth? Cheating in a relationship. Anybody want to answer? Anybody want to try on that? What the question The question is, okay. I perceive my partner is cheating because things have changed drastically in our relationship. How can I find out the truth? So the husband is cheating. She okay. lost trust. No, the wife. So she lost trust. So she lost trust. So she lost trust. For both, so the husband and the wife. Yeah. The wife. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Okay. It could be on both parties. Yes, I'm not the one to try. It's a melody. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. I think sure. sometimes us women, I will use myself, we always so nosy. We want to snoop into our husband's phone. We want to find out things. And then when we keep nagging at them, like, are you cheating? Or who's that other person? Sometimes they're not cheating. It's just in our mind that we're just assuming that, you know, if someone called them or if he just stepped out of the room or something, we just assuming that, oh, it's a woman. And half of the time it's not. Some men don't like a nagging, you know, Pastor always told me that some men don't like nagging women. And I used to do that with my husband. And then since I stopped, things have changed. So the um, only thing we could, you know, I could suggest is just pray about it. And if it is, God will reveal it to you and then God will show us how to make things better. You know, stop jumping to conclusion, just talk to it. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe the reason why the person that asked that question is because they have this sense or probably they perceive that something is going wrong. The question was, I feel that my partner is cha has changed because dr drastically 
things are not working the way it should. Mm -hmm. If your husband or your wife comes in at a certain time before, normally, they get off work at five o'clock, the max they probably will get home at seven o'clock, but now they're getting home at 10, 11. This is not the first time, it's not being constantly. As a woman, no matter what, no matter how praying wife you could be, or the husband to you, be sensing certain things. What is happening? Why is he keeping late nights? Your heart will be pounding. Of course, the flesh in us might probably come in for us to be searching things around, making phone calls. Some people might go to the extent of even following. But as a child of God, you, the main thing about a relationship, it's not only marriage, it's communication. Before you jump the gun, why don't you sit down and talk and relate with one another? Your lifestyle has changed and it's a burden on my part. Many a time, you know what we do? I, I use myself as an example. Oh, pastor should know what I'm thinking about. He really shouldn't know what I'm thinking about. I had to walk myself out of that mentality. If I don't talk to my husband, if I don't talk to my partner, how will he feel about me? How will he know what is happening? So you have to be able to understand that you have to sit down and talk with one another. And please, don't talk to, don't talk to somebody at the wrong time. There are times that are not pleasing. You have to catch that moment that you'll be able to talk and relate. Because one thing is, you know men, Men are very logistic, and women are very emotional. I have boys around me, I have male figures around me, they will sit down, they will listen to your conversation, your communication, but you know what? They might not utter any statements, and that will kill you. So you have to find out the right time, the right place, for you to be able to communicate, to find out why are things changing, and it is bothering you. Amen. Thank you, uh, next question. Have you seen it? How do you deal with an abusive relationship if you can't divorce? If you can't divorce? Yeah. What, what kind of... Uh, emotional, emotional, physical, physical, physical everyone, everyone, everything. 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 Uh, <laughs> if you cannot divorce, I said if you cannot, you cannot, you can't divorce. <laughs> <Financial. but then laughs> listen, listen, let, let me say this one. As long as we are all connected to this mission, if your husband is telling you don't tell pastor, <laughs> tell him your husband, I will report you to pastor. No, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> don't tell pastor. No, it's my privacy. Tell them I, if you abuse me, I will report you to pastor. <laughs> Thank you, pastor. <laughs> Are we together? Yes, sir. Don't hide behind this veil. If you take my stuff from the house and tell somebody, then you better do abuse the person at home. I refuse, I will, I will do everything to fight against abusive relationship. As long as I live, as long as I live, either physical or emotional abuse, I will do everything. I will even call cops on you as a man. <laughs> if I find out you abuse your wife. Thank you, sir. No, no, thank you. I'm serious. Next question. No, quickly. So, yeah, because they said they cannot come out. And the person is not is restraining themselves. Please, if you're in an abusive relationship, it can kill. Seek help. Seek help. You need to seek assistance. To with people that are kingdom minded. Because people will advise you and will cancel you out of emotion. Oh, my husband slapped me, my, look at the bruises. They have come to me before, they have shown me bruises, and guess what? They inflicted those bruises on themselves. Yes. So you have to be, if you're in an abusive marriage, it's better for you to find, you have to get counseling, ASAP. Because you do not want to die and you do not want to commit suicide. And the truth is, your husband slapped you once. He had the tendency to, to, to slap you 100 times. Don't cover up. Yes, he will do that. So now, please, if you do it more, he will do it. Don't do it. Over. Because Pastor will call the police. Don't I will. Pastor, this is for you and Hans. I got three questions. First one is for you, Pastor. 
Why some churches or pastors allow divorce? Why they allow it? Yeah. As long as I say that in this church I don't preach about doctrine, I don't teach about doctrine, but when it comes to the biblical ideologies where I get my belief system from, I will stand by what Jesus Christ said. Go back to Matthew 19, reading from verse 3 through 6. When Moses' bill was mentioned by the Pharisees, Jesus Christ told them, listen, it was the color of your heart, hardened hearted, that allowed Moses to brought forth that bill and pass it as a law. Originally, God created one man and one woman. No divorce. Question number two. Answer. Thank you. This one is for you. What are the role of uh, mother, father, sister, brother, in law? What are they supposed to do in the relationship? The mother, the father, the sister, the what? brother. What are the role of a mother, father, brother, sisters, cousins in a relationship? In a marriage or in a relationship? Yeah, yeah, both. Because some people just use the word in law or mother in law, that's it. They don't know what the devil you can go into the world. <laughs> but first the Lord, um, like it depends. The role of everybody is different in a relationship. It's better for you to agree with one another, to accept one another. Yeah. It's always very important. Don't have that strong mindset that, you know what, they're coming into my marriage to hurt me. Be hopeful-minded. In life, be, 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 be sensitive towards one another. Be able to tolerate one another. Let the mind of Christ be in us. Philippians 2 words. Amen. So let that mind of Christ, let it reside in us. If Christ cannot neglect his or our own back then, why should we be separating and, you know, dividing ourselves? We're meant to be complementing one another. We're meant to unite with one another. So a role of the mother-in-law, father-in-law, cousins, brothers and sisters, you're not in a separate family. Accept yourself as a one family, and you will see that things are going to work better and look better, and you will achieve it one more. Okay. Amen. Thank please, you. please don't jump out. Uh, don't thank out. <laughs> <laughs> there are some in laws that have become out laws. I said it here yesterday, and I, I know why I said it. There are many in laws that are destroying their children' marriage because of their selfish interest. Oh, yeah. You are just a conduit. You are just a means of bringing Psalm 127 verses a low children at the heritage of the Lord. You don't stand a right to claim that your child forever. Even he's grown up, she's grown up, you are still saying, she's my child. She's my baby. What are you going to let go? If your mother held you as a baby, will you get married? God allow you to give birth to the children. Bible said, train your children in the ways of the Lord. When they grow up, they won't depart. Have you taught them? Then leave them with your instructions. Let them go. If you have not taught them, don't come and be their mother forever, their father forever. So you're going to go, who is in your life? Who? I will make sure I fight for you. Come on. Let's get it right. I'm a father-in-law. I take the in-law out. I'm a father to my daughter-in-law. Yes, sir. And I'm a father for all. Yet yeah, I don't allow anybody around me to be cheated. If I see anything that is not going well, I will say it. Irrespective of what? But don't let us, because of selfish interest, destroy the life of our children. Amen. Thank you, sir, Pastor. Uh, church, I know we run out of time. Can we still continue? Yes, sir. Yes. Pastor, yes. you're okay. We still get time. Uh, question number three, the same topic. That's for your pastor again, sir. You start here, we should find our spouse partner. Why? <laughs> Somebody say, 
why should we find our partners in the church? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the question. Yeah. Yeah, I, I said before, the word of God said, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So, Bible commands you to run away, flee away from them. I said it before and I will say it again. You cannot, in your own wildest imagination or reasoning, change anybody. You can't change anybody. And it's a wrong belief to think if I change that unbelief, if I get and get to that unbelief brother, I'm going to change him to become a Christian. He will not. He can subscribe to what you are giving to her. But after he marry you, he will bring you to his religion. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I just want to quickly add to what Pastor had said. Somebody during our seminar in Atlanta in July, they actually asked us a question that where can they locate their partners, like youngsters. You can locate your partners in several million places. Places like your college. You can always laundromat, grocery stores, I'm telling you, restaurants, you can even go to a restaurant with a date, and meanwhile there's somebody else that is actually looking at you and giving you their numbers. You can actually, you can meet your partner in any place, as long as it's in the will of God, you are in the right place at the right time. I've seen people meeting themselves at the airport. And at the end of the day, conversation starting. I've seen people meeting themselves in a gathering like this. It could be like a function. Different functions, different events, on a vacation, on cruises, on holidays. Just pray to God and say, God, connect me with the flesh of my flesh and the bone of my bone. It does not matter. Somebody can introduce you to that person and say, you know what? I see a good man that you would really like and a good man that serves the Lord that will fit into your scheme of life here is the person's number these days nowadays young people don't like that and that's the best if I know anybody that's gonna add value to your life that's gonna love you and respect you for who you are unconditionally I will introduce you and I will tell them don't mention my name here's this person believe it or not First class, top notch. <laughs> so please remember, Thank it you. works. Thank you. Recommendation. It is a broad, it's a broad area, yeah. and I want to throw it out there. I pray God will give us some more time to, you know, go back to this kind of a forum again. The essence of why, perhaps, men of God advocates to their followers to marry people of like minded. Because when it comes to doctrine, even among Christians, we have difficulties yes. in bringing people of different backgrounds or perhaps belief system together. Yeah. You go to a church where they don't allow them to speak in tongue. Mm -hmm. So as a sister, you don't believe in it. I hear this a brother introduced to you who speak in tongue. You go to a place where they don't pay tight. I hear someone in your life who pay time. If you your leadership become one, how do you do it? So it is gonna be much much better. Then you can talk of don't or whatever. But before you start anything in those kind of situations, you have to believe that you are both Christians and your belief system is one. So it's not per se where you start it's about the belief system, what both of you agree on. That really matters. Thank you, sir. Any comment? Thank Uncle Jess here. What if you meet someone that's like you in the club? To start it as a as a Christian, what are you doing in the club? Clubs aren't clubs aren't necessarily bad. They're not necessarily bad. Clubhouse. Clubhouse. Not all clubhouses are bad. Oh, okay. I'm just saying that. But they are not secrets. They are not drugs. No, 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 no. No, no. Don't tell us you are on camera. Free camera. Define it. No, there's some clubs where there's no alcohol, there's no smoking. It's just literally dancing, getting to know people. Okay. So like, if I met a girl that's like myself, and I want, I like the vibe I'm getting from her. 
in the clubhouse. Huh? You can pursue her, you can pursue her based on her belief system. Yeah. And based on your wrongly established belief system that as a Christian you can go to pub house and dance on Friday and Saturday and come to church on Sunday and be sleeping. That's a wrong belief system. <laughs> based on that, because by the time you get engaged or perhaps marry that individual, you have to continue to go to pub house or pub house every Saturday and Friday. Once in a while. No, Auntie, um, Pastor, I beg to disagree because you know why? There are many clubs like, okay, as much as I don't want to use our children, but they have to grow to learn. Mm -hmm. Okay? They cannot, you always preach to us things that you have experienced. Mm -hmm. They cannot stand there. Of course, I'm not going to sit here blindfolded and they not believe that. Oh well, Jesse Hammer is not gonna go to a club. Mm -hmm. That's impossible. They're gonna go, but there are different types of clubs. There are lounges where you just go, they meet and greet and mingle. And then there, you, sometimes you find like pastors' children. Sometimes they go with somebody that accompanies, like their nanny or something. They just wanna go see what the atmosphere because sometimes they wanna see and kids now the scene is believing to them. So they go there. Let's say Jesse go with her, his nanny, Hannah go with his, her nanny. And then separate areas, they mean, oh, who's your, my father is a pastor, but I just want to come and see that. They mingle. That doesn't mean that becomes their everyday lifestyle. It's just coincidentally that it happened at that environment so they met. So I think it is allowed, but like you said, you have to know what is your culture, what is your religion, what is your belief system. Because outside the club, now I know you're going to, you know, try to know that person better. You're gonna try to know if you're really interested because first it's physical attraction. There's nothing here but physical attraction. And then that's gonna lead you into knowing the person better. And then that's when you will know if this is the person for your life. And but just starting at the club doesn't mean anything. That's just my opinion. Going to the club means a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Going to the club means a lot. Yes, we, we, We're talking about someone who, who for the first time in college, first week in college, excuse me, first week in college, went out, and she got a drink she was drinking. Uh, and after finishing the drink, up to now, she's still in a vegetative uh, situation. She was in her way. Somebody put something in it, and up to now, for the past three years now, she, she doesn't know where she is. Please, I beg you, it is a wrong belief system for you as a Christian to subscribe to the idea that club does not mean anything, it means a lot. I have seen someone who gave wood based on just to puff like this, Mariana, and she went, he went like that, just once. Don't do it. You want to try it wherever you get out of it, it's yours, but don't do it. Don't go to any clubhouse. Your husband is not in clubhouse. I seek and reach it while not get together in clubhouse. <laughs> yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, next question. I think this is for the audience. Is kissing before marriage a sin? No. no. Just as said, no. It's not. It's not. Kissing, kissing. Just as said, no. Don't give me the mic. No, no. Just as said, no. You want to say, you want to say, no. I just want to say this. No. Because. I, I think you should not do it, only because of this reason. Because kissing leads to other things, and it is the truth. Once you start kissing, then you start feeling something, and then those emotions start taking over, and then something else That's where self-control comes in. Don't start with your kiss, man. Don't be kissing. No, 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 no. Self-control. There's no like self-control. 
self-control. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I don't. I agree. There's nothing like self-control. As much as you think you can do self-control, as soon like like my sister said here, it's about physical attraction. As soon as you see that beautiful young lady or that handsome young man, and he starts or she starts kissing you, and you cannot. There's nothing like self-control. I tell you the truth. Your feelings will take over, and then you will lead to other things. So I honestly. Believe, God forbid, you know, if you do it, you can always repent, but I, I suggest you don't do it. Don't do it. So, Sister Bridget, that's sin. Don't do it. Don't do it or sin. No, it's a sin. 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 Number two, are we supposed to get... No, he doesn't agree. He doesn't agree. So let's pray the whole way. This is the way I just believe, like, especially in this generation, there's no way you could be in a relationship with anybody. There's no way you could be with somebody and they're walking and you never kiss them, like. What are you waiting for? I don't know your waiting thing. You just see what you're doing. Just see what you're doing. What are you doing? What are you waiting for? Just see what you're doing. What are you waiting for? Just see what you're doing. What are you waiting for? It could just be a kiss. And if we don't practice, it can be a kiss on the cheek. Just say for the cheek. Kiss on 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 the cheek.
Praise God. Hallelujah. It's a good one. God bless you for bringing out that one. Marriage is perfected by consummation. Yes. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Without consummation, marriage is not sealed. Yeah. It cannot be a situation like that's why we're talking about so time in a relationship. Once you started kissing, hugging, and knowing each other naked before wedding, you have already committed yourself to so time. Yeah. Let me start up. Maybe we can run up on this one. Text Many marriages are going through challenges because uh, the women compare their ex with their husband. Yes, sir. Yes, that's true. That's true. Mm. Everybody agrees. And the men too are not satisfied because they compare their ex friend with their girlfriend with their wife. Mm -hmm. So anytime they are with their wife, they are not satisfied. Yes, that's true. So true. So when you put that, and the man is not going to tell you that I'm comparing you with her. You can, you can Jesus. And your wife is not going to tell you, husband, I'm comparing you with my ex. But she's not satisfied. She's just there like a lock of wood because she has experienced something. Eating and biting a forbidden fruit. It is so it is for your goodness. It is for your goodness. And for the perfection of the saints, the word is meant to correct and to reprove. Take it either way. It may be too harsh, but I know what I'm saying. I've been through it. I can't say you like listen to people. Thank you, Pastor. I think this one goes back again. Let's just finish with this one. Yes, I believe it's a he that write this one. Uh, are we supposed to get intimate with a quotation talk with our girlfriend? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Are we supposed to get intimate talk? Talk. 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 Intimate talk. 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 <laughs> your relationship. What happened in your relationship? I don't even understand the question. Take back. Oh, okay. Are we supposed to get intimate thoughts? Are we supposed to about think? Like, yeah. think okay. about you are we like supposed to think, think about in the thinking? With our girlfriend or That's not like normal. Sixteen. We're talking of those who are dating or those who are caught in her. No, 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 you get the question. Hmm? Dating. What is dating? Like infatuations? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, it's lost. Yeah, I mean, yeah. what I what was in my mind was uh, fornication. When you start yeah, lusting in your in your mind, you're still committing a sin against God because you're not upholding your girlfriend. You know, she's not your wife. She's not you know the flesh of your flesh bone. You just bones. kiss still, someone. You just kiss. Kissing is good. But then this calls me to <laughs> think further. No, 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 when you start like yeah, when you start imagining, you start thinking about. But, but you guys are not currently having sex and doing anything, but if you're thinking beyond that, yeah. then it's still a sin. You're still it's lusting. It's a sin. It's lost. It's actually going to arouse you and cause you to want to actually do it in real life. Yeah. So the next question is, what time is right to have a girlfriend or even married? What time? What, what, when is it right? What time? What, what time? Boyfriend what or age? Boyfriend? What age? Is it okay? Oh, what it's time? Time? What time? What time? It's, 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 not, it's not time, time. <laughs> 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 that's not time. That's not time. That's not time. This is. This is. Let's. Maybe we're going to round up with this one. It's sister already because of tomorrow. I. 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 I have challenges and difficulties in dealing with the. I. I. I have challenges and difficulties in dealing with the. Our younger ones here. Yeah? With the issue of courtship, while you are 20, 21, 22, my question is, okay, you want to go to courtship, what, what is in your mind? You want to get married? If the answer is no, okay, you're going to graduate from college in two years, and you, you, think of, you want to pursue your education to medical school, so you have five years more to go, and you say you are 
you, you, you are in courtship now. When do you want to get married? Courtship is to prepare you to get married. Dating is to prepare you to get married. Do you want to court for five years? Or seven years? Or eight years? If you think, oh, the end of the journey is in two years, oh, you can start. Come, let's talk about it. Pastor, I want to get married in two years. Hey, come on, you can't start dating and courting. Nobody's going to cap your age at 20, 21, 25, or 28. You're going to know yourself, this is what I want to do. You have found the person, the person is ready, bring the person. Don't do it outside this. Are we together? Yes. So it's not an age issue. It's about what you want to do with your own life. Praise the Lord. Um, quickly to add what Pastor just said, that you have to be very mature-minded in order for you to have a home, to have a settled home. So people are still living in, the, in their parents' house at the age of 30, 35, 40, and then you say you want to get married. Where are you going to bring that wife or that husband? So you have to be mentally prepared, physically prepared and, and ready, and financially ready as well. So please don't run into marriage. But even though marriage is lovely, it's honorable, like the Bible says, but please take your time in getting married. Isaac was 40 years old when he got married, when he found Rebecca. And she, he found peace for the rest of his life. So tell our young people, there's no need to rush. Please, it's better for you to enjoy yourself, enjoy your life with your friends. Because when you get married, there are certain things that you cannot do any longer. You have to keep your home holy. Thank you. Yes, we're all learning something tonight. Yeah. Uh, the next question. It says. That's the same thing. It's not me. Okay, let me finish, please. Smile. It says advisable to tell our dreams to our girlfriend, boyfriend. Your what? Your dreams. Girlfriend, boyfriend. As in. As in what you aspire to do in life. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No. Why? You guys spiritual. <laughs> 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 Yeah. You see, the, the, the place of success. The place of success is in revelation. The place of success. Success is in revelation. If you can't see it in the spiritual realm, you can't aspire to become. You can't get there. So your dream is what keep you awake while others are sleeping. It's in revelation. It's in a, it's in a place. So if you have that already, the Bible says. Write the vision down, make it, make it very plain. plain. So wherever that's thing we run it. If anyone may come into your life, you have to be able to present yourself. Listen, I have my plan. I said it before to women coming into our life, you are meant to not to be the boss, but to compliment us. But here is it, if you come into the life of a man who has no vision, of course you have to impose your vision on that man. But if you meet someone who already has a vision, you just come in to join him because if you want to impose your vision on him, there will be a division in the house. So it goes for both genders, men and women. Have your vision when both of you are coming together, lay it down. Talk about it. Talk about it. If someone is talking about having a home care center, someone is talking about having a back shop. Come on now, it's not going to, it's not going to work. On. Uh, next question. Next question. It is important to get married. Is it important? We we'll address that with oh. It's your choice. It's your choice. Yeah. It is not compulsory to get married, but now going back to <laughs> reprocreation, <laughs> God wants us to multiply. If you don't get married, there is no Adam and Adam. <laughs> there is no John John, it's John and Felicia. Yes, sir. Okay. Praise God. Yeah. So bring forth. So bring forth the good teams. No, no, boxing. 
<laughs> this one is a general question. Anyone can answer it. Should the bills be shared equal or should a man put in more because he is the head of the house? No. So you, you believe in income? Income. It depends on the so income. Whoever makes more income puts more down. Nah. No. 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 And if both of them are working, I feel it should go 50-50. And, you know, because there are times where, you know, she might be working less and he had to put in, like for example with us, when we first bought the house, there were two mortgages. One was bigger and one was smaller. He gave me the smaller mortgage and he took the bigger mortgage. And as time will go by, he ended up paying all of the, the bills right now. And I just got to work to, for vacation kind of thing. So. It goes, you know, both ways. Yeah. Thank you. That's a good one. Um, finance is one of the challenges that we all face in relationship, in marriage, just let me put it that way. And before you get married, please overcome this hurdle. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you can share your body. Hello? Yes, I don't know how you can trust that man, that woman, with your body. Your body is everything you have. And you can't trust the person with the money. Something is wrong with us. Something is definitely wrong with our belief system. I said it this way when I was growing up, I hear my parents saying, you don't hide your body from those who we bury you. She's my next of kin, for Christ's sake. My children are not my next of kin. Yes. Now, if I'm hiding something in the room from her, don't you think I'm stupid? So you are. When you are hiding something from your next of kin, your old brother, you are foolish. You are talking about race. The bills are for us, not for her, not for me, it's for us. How do we do it? Whatever is left is still for us. So, Fury and Anais, like to the Holy Spirit, they die. I wish this is the time. You lie to me, you die. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, let's, let's overcome it. We came with nothing, we don't go with anything. You, you, you can't you can sleep on two beds simultaneously. You can't occupy two rooms simultaneously. It's just one room to you. Let's get let's get over this money thing. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I just quickly want to add to what Pastor is saying. Please, a relationship is different from a marriage. In relationship finances, you have to separate it because you're still in relationship. Be not be you the Bible says my people are perishing for lack of knowledge. Because you are in love with somebody and you have been dating that person for five, ten years, does not mean that you should go and add them as an additional owner to your American Express. You are not yet married to that person. So please, it's one thing at a time. Let's take a step in everything that we do. But when you get into marriage, be transparent. Let everything be open. I can boldly say in this place, that I know everything about my husband. I have his bank account, I have his PIN number, I have his email address, his email password. He has this, he has everything about me. My phone is never unlocked. God forbid. It's never locked. It's, I mean, it's never locked. <laughs> Somebody was in a car accident six months ago, the person that we know. Our phone was unlocked and they had to operate on this young girl that we know. And this young girl was out of the town. Do you realize, thank God, that things work in a miraculous way. Her sister called at that time. Mm. And they, she, she sent her sister, her sister. And they picked it up. They said, listen, you are in New York. Your sister is in Florida. 
she has not been responding. She's in a terrible car accident. We, we just need your consent. She said, I'm a doctor. Go ahead and operate on her. I lost my phone at Aldo. And I did not lock it. The man scrolled. And she saw home. And she contacted us on our landline. I picked it up. She said, I don't know. I know you've been going shopping all day, but you left your phone at Aldo. Are you picking it up or should we mail it to you? I said, I'm coming back. You are the West Fremont. I will. If I had, you remember, if you locked your phone and this, so please, for your husband, for your wife, be transparent. Let them know everything about you. Don't hide yourself. Don't put them in problems if anything happens to you. Why should you be keeping secret accounts? Secret accounts. Secret accounts. There are people that keep secret accounts. They open a Capital One or TD Bank or Bank of America, and meanwhile they have a joint account, birth page with their partner. Please don't do it. Because as a Christian, you don't do things like that. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are one. Please. That is where a lot of families, they're falling apart. My husband, I can boldly say, he knows everything about me. Okay. I don't hide anything. You can take my pocketbook in the middle of the night and search it. It's okay. It will be clean and lovely. <laughs> All right, Andy, thank you. Uh, I have a question here. That will be last question. You said, how do you keep your marriage interesting when you have kids? How do we keep the marriage spicy? Uh, <laughs> we have kids. Uncle John, how do we do that? The auntie would answer. <laughs> <laughs> Before they say the marriage is born, now when you have kids, what do you do? To make it They have to ask them to sell the kids to bed. You have to ask somebody to put them in the car. So your wife said you should answer. You say answer that. Exactly. And they have four. Yeah, we have four. We have four kids. We have four kids. Don't complain. <laughs> Accept. What? Don't complain. I don't Is this honest? That's real. I'm telling you. Don't complain. Accept your faults. How to keep it lively? I'm <laughs> telling you, that's the way. You said because honest. if you started complaining, if you started complaining, then the naga naga comes in. So what you should do, if you have kids, you guys gotta work as a team, help each other. If you're gonna bathe the kids or whatever you're gonna do, you get it done. But they come to the spicy now, inside, inside. I don't believe I don't believe in flowers, roses. Oh, it's true. Which is true. Yes, it's true. I don't believe it's true, in true. Right. It's true, right? We don't believe in that yet. This is what I believe. <laughs> Inside here, I love you. Uh, Call you, text you. Text that can go long. So you buy flowers one day, done. So how do we emotional in the bedroom? Unconditional. <laughs> The mama answered the first question. Praise God. Praise God. I want to ask you a question. Uh, when, when, uh, uh, when you want to sleep and then you. <laughs> <laughs> time uh, you want to sleep. <laughs> they come to stop. That's what's Keep it spicy. And then, um, <laughs> you have been saying six months that I need stop. I need something. <laughs> 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 
will change yep. and the priorities have to change around accommodating those kids. Even it goes to the physical structure of the woman. And I tell people in Kansali, it will go to a point that you as a man you begin to feel who does your wife love most? Is it me or is it the kids? Mm -hmm. Mentally you gotta prepare for it. So it will change. And as you change, you change, we, evolve, we all evolve around things around us. You speak about it and you keep moving. The baby is yours as much as the baby is ours. But she's more closer to the baby as a mother. She spent more of the time with the baby. So the, the bond is there, the tie is there. But you still have to know that in her mind, she loves you. Now you want to go to bed when you think she's still taking care of the home front structure. And at this time you want her to come and jump to bed with you. Come on now. She won't do it. If she still has something doing it, you, you have to center your priority around her own needs as well. Because it's bonding. Otherwise she will be with you on bed and her mind will be divided. She will not be with you 100%. Because her mind is somewhere else. But if you give her enough time, yeah, it's good that you're talking about it, I believe she will respond. She will respond. Give me some time. I will join you. And by the time she finishes, you are sleeping. Okay. Is it not better off for you to, for her to let you sleep? Rather than how disturbing you, you talk about it. And if it's something that is going on over and over, then then, then we know it. She did prayer. Not there. <laughs> because you are not meant to stab your